Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the second episode of Storytime with Miss Ali. Today we're going to be reading Under the Ramadan Moon. Ready to get started? Come with me. Under the Ramadan Moon. This book is written by Sylvia Whitbin and illustrated by Sue Williams. We wait for the moon, we watch for the moon, we watch for the Ramadan moon. We fast by day, under the moon, under the moon, under the Ramadan moon. We eat at night, under the moon, under the moon, under the Ramadan moon. We speak kind words and stop bad habits under the moon. We give to the poor and read Quran under the moon. We hang bright lights and bake sweet treats under the Ramadan moon. We visit friends under the moon under the moon, under the Ramadan moon. Now we're right in the middle of Ramadan right now, so our moon looks just like this. We crack nuts and drink hot tea under the moon. We tell stories and laugh and play under the Ramadan moon. Then together we pray under the moon, under the moon, under the Ramadan moon. We live our faith until next year, under the moon, under the moon, under the Ramadan moon. What a beautiful book. This is one of my all-time favorites. Did you enjoy it too? Since we read about the Ramadan moon, I thought it would be fun to make our own moon craft. To make today's craft, you're going to need a completely white paper plate, some paint in different colors that you like, a paintbrush, scissors, a marker, it could be in any color that you like, a cup of water, a paper towel, and some string or yarn. Why don't I give you a few minutes to go gather all of these things and then we'll make our craft together. So the first thing I want you to do is to grab your white paper plate and your marker. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a crescent moon on one half of the plate. Now the so you're going to pick a point, any point on your paper plate, and you're just going to follow the curve of the paper plate all the way down to the bottom. And our crescent moon today is going to be a little bit fatter than the normal crescent moon, which is very thin because we want to be able to paint this in and punch a hole in it later. And then I want you to draw a star in that empty side. Now, a star might be a little tough, so if you have a grown-up around to help you, or an older brother or sister, that would be really helpful. So I'm just gonna draw a five-pointed star. Your star can have as many points as you like. Done. So now you're going to take your paintbrush and you're going to paint your moon any color that you like. I decided to go with the color blue. I don't really know why, but the color blue is a very calming and peaceful color, and Ramadan always reminds me of peacefulness and calm nights. So that's the color I'm gonna use for my moon. So go ahead, take your paintbrush, and color or paint in your moon. You wanna do that all the way from the top to the bottom. Now, one of the things I want you to remember about these paper plates 
is that they have these grooves right over here and you have to be very mindful to paint inside of those grooves as well as the outsides because if you don't paint in them you're going to have these weird white lines on your moon and you don't want that. Now you also don't have to worry about staying in the lines that you drew. It's okay like, like how I just went out of the line a little bit. That's completely fine because we're actually going to cut this moon out um, a little bit later after the paint dries. So here are the grooves. I'm making sure I'm putting my paintbrush right into these grooves so that the paint covers every part of that paper plate. I don't want any white streaks on my paper plate. Most done. When you're done painting your moon, you can wash your paintbrush out. Make sure you get all of the first color off. I see some white, let me cover that up. Make sure you get all of that first color off when you wash your paintbrush. And then you're gonna choose your second color because we are going to paint our star. So I think I'm gonna do my star in yellow. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush again, I'm gonna wipe it off, and I'm gonna paint it yellow. You can choose any color that you like. You can even choose the same color that you used for the moon. So if you wanted, you could do a blue moon and a blue star. Whatever you like is fine. I just wanna do yellow because I want something a little bit different. So I'm gonna take my yellow paint, and I'm gonna go ahead and just dab it into my star. And once again, I'm not really worried about those lines. I don't really care if I stay in the lines or not because this is going to be cut out. Now, yellow is a really light color. You might need a second coat, so I'm gonna dab some more yellow paint onto that because I want it to be a bright yellow color. Um, if you're using a darker color, you might not need to do this, but I do, so. Now I have a nice, bright, yellow star to go with my blue moon. So now we're gonna let this dry. I would say give it about 20 minutes to dry. So that way when you cut, you're not like getting paint all over yourself. So let's leave this for 20 minutes. Why don't you go play for a little bit and then we'll come back and cut our star and our moon out. All right, it's been about 20 minutes and now our paint is dry. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to carefully cut out our moon and our star. Now, you can cut this out on your own if you're good with scissors. And if you need a little bit of help, make sure you ask a grown up. So remember that black line that we drew earlier? That black line is right over here. So we are going to go ahead and just cut along that black line. So we have a beautiful crescent moon. Here we are. Let's do the same thing with the star. Now the star is gonna be a little bit trickier because it has points and it's, it's not as smooth as the moon. Um, so if you need help, definitely ask a grown up. but if you're a big boy or a big girl and you can do this on your own, then that's great too. So I'm cutting out my star. Um, have you noticed any stars in the sky lately? We're in a um, period of transition from winter to spring, so we're gonna be seeing different stars in the sky now than we would see in the winter time. It's really interesting. Go ahead and take a look one night, maybe um, right after you pray Isha, or maybe even as you're eating sahur with your parents' permission, of course, of course. Okay, so I have my star, I have my moon, and my star. So the next step is to take a hole puncher and to punch a hole into the top of the crescent and into the top of the star. Now, if you don't have a hole puncher, that's completely fine. A trick that I like to use is to put the piece of paper that I'm putting punching a hole into on a soft carpet or a pillow or a sofa cushion, and then take a really sharp pencil and just poke it really hard into the paper that I'm trying to punch a hole into. And that's almost the same as having a hole puncher. So either one of those strategies is fine. So I have my hole puncher. Punch a hole right 
over here. So now I have a hole in my crescent moon and I'm gonna punch a little hole into my star. Let's do that right here. So I have a hole in my star and a hole in my crescent moon. Now you're going to take your string and you're gonna measure about four inches of string and if you don't know how much four inches is, you can always use a ruler and you're gonna measure up to the number four which is right about here. And here's my four inches, you're just gonna cut it off. And once you cut it off, oh no, my scissor doesn't like me today. Let's try it this way, all right. Once you've cut that string off, you're going to tie it around the little star that we just cut off. So here we go, I'm gonna thread the string through here, and then I'm just going to tie it. And this is a, can get really tricky, so you might want to ask a grown up for some help. So here we go. We have the star and the string attached, so we're just gonna put that to the side for now. And then we're going to get more string so now we want about 12 inches. So again, you can take your ruler and you don't even have to look at the numbers neck this time because the ruler is going to be 12 inches. So you can just cut that when you have that measured out. And you're going to tie this string to the hole that we punched into the moon. So the moon that we punched earlier and we're going to tie it. I like to double knot it. That means you tie it once and then you tie it again. So your knot is nice and strong and your moon doesn't um, become unraveled from the string. So we have a moon on a string that looks like this. Now, remember that star we did earlier? We wanna tie that string, the other half of that string, into the same hole that we punched in the moon. So it's going to look like this when we're done. The star is going to look like it's dangling from the string right over here. So let's do that right now. And again, this part's a little tricky, so you might want some help from your parents or from your grown-ups at home. So once again, I am double knotting. This is really tricky for Miss Ali. Oh, here we are. This is what our craft looks like. We made a hanging Ramadan moon and star Decorate. You can go ahead and hang this on your wall, you can hang this from the ceiling, you can hang it on your window, and it is beautiful and it really gives some Ramadan joy and cheer to your home. I am so excited to see you on Zoom later on and for you to show me your moon and star decorations that you made. So finish this up, get it ready, hang it up in your house, and when we talk on Zoom later, make sure you have it ready so you can share it with me and all of the other kids that are going to be joining us. Make sure you tell your grown-ups to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and like us on YouTube, and I am so excited and can't wait to see you later. Assalamu alaikum.